Carbon pricing in En-ROADS. A carbon price makes the fuel from coal, oil, and gas more expensive based on the carbon density of that fuel. It's the highest impact from coal. Oil's a little bit less, a little bit less for natural gas. There are about 46 jurisdictions, na national jurisdictions around the world today in 2021 that have a carbon price. The prices go from 10 to $20, some above $100. And when you input it into En-ROADS, of course, you can think of it as the global average price where many countries and areas will have zero, some will have it much lower, some will have much higher than whatever price that you put in. The easiest way in En-ROADS is to just imagine it as low, as uh, medium, as high, or very high. You can think of it that way. Of course, underneath, you get to see exactly what price you're putting in when you input all of those different carbon prices. Whatever price you put in is shown over here. It rises over 10 years up to that new price. You can set how many years it takes to get there. Of course, you can change it to seven years. And then you have advanced features where you can also say, well, I want it to go all the way up to $299 starting in 2032, and it's going to take 57 years to get there. You can set whatever you want as a scenario for the future. So what does En-ROADS have to say about the dynamics of carbon pricing? The main point is that a carbon price is powerful, but it is not a silver bullet. Even under very high carbon prices that we push very high, we will not get under two degrees. It's not a silver bullet. It needs complementary actions in other areas, particularly in agriculture and other emissions and really helps when you have other actions like energy efficiency, etc. It needs to be complemented by other policies. Why? Well, there are four big explanations about really why it's so powerful, why it has such a large effect on temperature. So four reasons it affects temperature so much. Then we'll talk some about some of the equity considerations when you think about carbon pricing. So four effects. Number one, the timing. When you affect a carbon price, and here we're imagining it starting in 2021, it reduces greenhouse gases almost immediately. It's not as much prey to the long delays of what we call capital stock turnover. When you introduce a new technology, whether it's electric vehicles or renewable energy or nuclear energy that take a long time to reduce emissions. Look here at this graph on the top right. You can see greenhouse gas net emissions departing from the black line here in the early 2020s. It happens very soon. It has a strong effect in the 2020s. The second big effect is that it happens soon, but it also has a large impact by changing the fuel mix directly. Let's go and see what's going on with, for example, coal. It reduces coal significantly. Why? It doesn't just change the investments in coal capacity. It also changes utilization. Existing coal-fired power plants are not getting used quite as much. Same with natural gas. The effect is not as strong. Same as a shift away from oil, although it's not as big a change because the carbon density is less and also uh, it, there are fewer substitutes for oil. It's hard to shift away from that. So those are the first two. Number three is an effect that isn't talked about very much. And it is the fact that when you have a carbon price, the cost of energy goes up. Here it is rising pretty significantly over time. When it goes up, that has a strong effect on the investment in energy efficiency and the just delivery of energy conservation. Therefore, final energy consumption, energy demand is a little bit lower following the blue line, not the black line. Not discussed much, but this price demand feedback loop. There's a whole nother training on that feedback loop is really powerful. It leads to more drops in energy demand. The fourth impact of why a carbon price has such a big impact on greenhouse gas net emissions and temperature is what happens via 
particularly the natural gas industry. We have less natural gas. Less natural gas leads to less leakage of methane. Less leakage of methane. Watch what happens to methane emissions. This is not carbon dioxide. In this way, a carbon price actually affects methane indirectly by curtailing use of natural gas, reducing natural ga greenhouse gas emissions, and supplementing the effect via the energy sector and the carbon dioxide emissions from it. So those are the main four impacts. But we also should look at some equity considerations. We really want to multi-solve, solve many problems together. There are some important considerations with multi-solving. The first you saw a minute ago, what about this high carbon price? What are going to be the impacts on particularly marginalized communities of people who are trying to put gas in their vehicles to get to work, who are trying to pay their household energy bill when that cost goes up? One possibility is to look to the revenue that's generated from this carbon price. Here it is getting up to $5.2 trillion a year. There is significant money that could be given back to people or used in order to uh, weaken the damaging effect of those high energy prices. The other equity considerations is the good news of what happens with overall uh, air pollution. Look at air pollution from energy, PM 2.5 emissions. These are the uh, the particles that cause so many lung problems, heart disease, asthma, as opposed to following the black line, it follows the blue line. We have a lot less coal, therefore we have cleaner air around the world. All right, there are the main uh, considerations and impacts of a carbon price. As you can see, it is a powerful way to shift the fuel mix. It is not a silver bullet. It brings with it some equity concerns and some equity bonus. I hope that was helpful. Go get them.